All right, we are back in the booth on a Saturday morning. And what we're going to get into today is we're going to do one of these nine inch clash knockoffs from lurebill.com from Jimmy. So if you're interested in one of these clash baits, go check out lurebill.com. He gives great service, has all your lure supply needs, eyes, blanks, paints, stencils, um, airbrushes. I mean, Jimmy's, Jimmy's your one-stop shop for your lure supply needs, so go check him out. So what I've already done here is I've taken a, a solvent-based silver white pearl and I've painted three quarters of the bait. I left the bottom kind of transparent. You can still see the, the BBs or whatever you want to call them because I want to get that look. And I'm going to kind of do a blue back herring because that's really the main forge fish around where I live on Clarks Hill Lake. So we're going to give this a whirl. The, the unique thing about this bait is it comes, it comes with a lip. You can actually use the lip or not use it. It comes with two different tails. Both of them are clear, which I like. I'd rather have the tails clear. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna paint them with a solvent-based paint from SMS in a color shift um, with some clear emerald and clear sapphire colors. So let's get to it. I'm gonna go, like I said, I've already painted the base, so I'm gonna take it out of this temporarily until I get some of my detail stuff done. So I'd rather lay it flat. And I didn't bring my sponge over. I'm still setting up this new booth. I don't have everything over here and it's just kind of driving me crazy really. So I'm gonna have to use a tape roll for this. All I'm wanting to do is kind of get it to sit up a little bit and you can use anything. It doesn't have to be a sponge. I want to try to get it where you can see it. I'm still getting used to this booth. It is very big. And the way I've got my camera set up, I'm trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a, I'm going to use my Creos PS771 and I'm going to put some carbon black in it so I can do the stencil work. And we're going to be using some um, some new stencils from Whitmore Farm with Jeff. Jeff has some fantastic products. If you haven't uh, checked Jeff out, you need to go to Whitmore Farm and check out his stencils because they are fantastic. I've cut the air down too low. I got to get used to this compressor too. It's a little bit different than my one in the other shop there we go and i actually did bring my my dry tip container out with me this morning I got it a little too high that's better okay so we're on about 15 pounds of pressure just for the stencil work and uh i'll tell you what Let's do one thing before we do the stencil on there. I want to take a little bit of um, gold and I'm going to run across the lateral line on this bait. I'm going to try it this way this time because a herring has got a little bit of gold in it. And I want to make sure that I can that on there before I start doing the stencil. I'd rather it be under it because I don't want it to be dominant. I just want it to be there. Just a hint of gold. And I'm going to use this golden iridescent bright fine for this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it on the lateral line here. And it just gives it just a hint of gold. 
And I'm spraying this with my Galari Ace, which is a .38. So we'll spin that around and go ahead and do both sides while we got it in the gun. And all I'm doing is starting about the gill plate and just running it back. Just want it to have a, a little bit of faint gold on it. So I'll leave that in the gun because I'm gonna use that later. So we'll go back and put our Creos on with the black in it and we'll flip it over. It was done very lightly, so it's not a, it's not a lot. And I'm gonna take the Gerald Mendez stencil and I wanna be careful with this because I don't wanna come down too low so I'm going to start it at the top of the gill plate and come down. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't really want a lot on the head or the gill plate because I'm going to do something different with it. But I like the way I did the gold. I, that, I've done it in, in the reverse in the past and it kind of covered up my, my stencil work and I didn't like that. So we'll go ahead and flip it over. And do the same thing on this side. We'll just reverse the stencil, just make sure it's not wet. We'll start at the gill plate and come across it. And stop there. And that looks good. And then we'll slide it down and do the same thing on this side. And that worked out really good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a small shad dot on here and I'm just gonna do it on the lateral line, maybe just a, a little bit off the, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want one on there. Doesn't have to be huge. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than that. because the bait's so large. This is a nine inch bait, it's, it's very big. So we're gonna be careful with that, bring it around, do the same thing on this side. If you don't feel comfortable freehanding it, you can, you can get a stencil and do it, it's not a big deal. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, a Anarchy stencil, which is the creature feature, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the face and the gill here. Just about like that. And I am gonna go ahead and darken the eye. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch guns and I'm gonna go back to the gold and I'm gonna use a smaller one, the smaller creature feature stencil. I'm gonna need a little bit more paint in here. I'm gonna use the tinier one, same stencil, just the, it's the, the mini. And I'm gonna go on the top side of it and it's hard to see on camera and I'm going to go over some of the black 
it's very hard to see, but it, it gives it a nice little detail. So we'll go ahead and flip it over and do the same with it. I didn't touch that one, so we'll make sure we get up on this. So we're gonna go back to the, the larger stencil with the black. We're not gonna go just a little bit here on the front. Then I'll switch guns again, go back to the, to the gold, go with the smaller, and we'll kind of put a little bit around it. I just put a little bit over the the black. And it kind of, like I said, it's very hard to see on camera. I've got to darken this eye. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let it dry. I'm gonna put it back in some helping hands because then I have to do the top because the, you know, we're gonna do this in a color shift. So we wanna make sure that we're spraying off of black. So uh, we'll go ahead and take the black that we have and we're gonna go ahead and put just a thin line on the top And then we'll kind of make it meet up. I want the head to have a little more color shift on than the sides. I won't totally meet it up with, with the scale pattern that I did. Not scale pattern, but the texture stencil. I don't want to go over that. So we're gonna let that dry just for a minute. I don't have my air, I mean my hair dryer over here, so I'm kind of having to play with this a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out. I just wanna make sure I've done everything on this side that I wanna do. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. clean that out while that's drying. I have two little bottles here that I've gotten from Spray Gunner that one actually has 4011 reducer in it and the other one has acetone in it because if I'm, you know, when I'm doing, when I'm mixing these solvent-based paints and water base, I don't want to mix that up because you will gunk your gun up. So we'll go ahead and just clean this out and make sure all that black is out. So we'll take it and kind of dry this off. We'll just use our airbrush.
I really like the way the gold came out on this. It's That's by far the better way to do it. Is to apply the gold first. And I like the little bit of transparency in the bottom. I think that kind of adds to it too. The uh, solvent-based House of Color paints are very nice. They're a little pricey, but uh, I like using them. They they do a great job. I don't have the the chipping and stuff that I had with some of the water base that I used um, when I was doing stencil work. I didn't have to go back. I I kind of took a process out. I would. I would paint the bait, the base coat, then I'd cover it with UVLS just to keep it from chipping. And I've kind of eliminated that step doing doing it with the solvent-based paints. And that's kind of nice. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get us a dropper. And I buy these on Amazon. They're, you can get like, I'll, I, I've gotta figure out how to put all these links in these videos so y'all can have access to this stuff. But you, you can get like, I think it's like 200 for like five or six dollars. And I like I don't like to pour the solvent based pan. I like to dip them out and just use what I need. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this SMS. This is a Galaxy Color Shift. It's blue purple, which is gonna be perfect for a, a blue back herring. So what I'm gonna do is just shake this up. They mix really well. I don't have, I, I've gotta get another 4E's mixer for out here because that is a that is a critical piece. I was actually talking to John Flynn the other day and uh, that is one of the best things I've bought in a long time was that 4E's mixer. It just saves you a lot of headaches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip it out and get some in the gun. This is actually a really large gun, I mean a large bait, so it's gonna take some paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get the cup, get some in there, put the lid back on so I don't knock it over. I've done that before and that's kind of a pain in the butt. So like some of the other videos I've done, what you gotta remember is whatever the color shift is gonna react differently on black. And it will have a different effect on the white or silver here also. So you can kind of get different um, color shades with it. So what we're gonna do is we'll start on, and start on the face here. And you can actually see it's already changing. It'll already go to a very cool purple blue. And I will hit some of this black that I did the scale work on. The color shift paints really have changed the way we paint, really. Put a little bit on the face here. And that gives it a unique color. The only difference about my booth now is my camera is really right in front of me. I'm having to kind of go around it until I figure out how I can get a uh, better angle on the camera. I like to, I've got a GoPro and it's at a different angle.
that draw for just a minute. Right, so we'll let that dry and you can see the color shift in it it goes from blue to purple to the gold in the middle and it's really a cool looking paint if you've never used sms it's it's a really neat color so now what i'm going to do is i've i've tried this on a few other baits and it's it's really turned out cool well, I tell you what, we'll do the we'll we'll go ahead and do our stencil first. We'll put some we'll put some scale pattern in this. And let's see here. We'll do a little bit of white. So we're gonna use some some titanium white on this. I gotta take the lid off. This is a brand new bottle and I hadn't I have not prepped it, so we're gonna get that off. Just no big deal. Except it's got a little plastic piece over top of it, unfortunately. I like to use silver on this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try the white on it this time. So we're going to switch guns again. I'm about to clean it out. Get the black out of here. The black just wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it that well. And plus, I'm going to use the Gerald Mendez stencil for for some more uh, texture on the sides of this. And I'm gonna do that in the white. I just think it'll, it'll be able to be seen a lot better. I think it'll come out a whole lot better. It's gotta get this black out of the gun. Black's always fun to get out of the gun. You really have to be careful with that Galeri Ace. It's the cup's got a a deeper opening, and it's kind of deceiving. It kind of you will leave paint into it if you're not careful. You want to make sure you back flush that out to get it out. And we're going to use a new stencil from Whitmore Farm on this, just to do a little bit of scale on the on the shoulder and the back. So we're gonna put a little bit of titanium white in the gun. Put it back. And he's actually got, like I said, there's three stencils he sent me yesterday. And these are very, very nice. We'll go over them. This one is a, kind of looks like a camo. It's a G2 V2 11 by four. Very cool stencil. Then we got two scale stencils. One is a scale V12, which is all the same size. And then we have a scale V11, which it varies. It's got, it kind of curves around. I kind of like that, but I'm gonna go with this one on it, the standard. Cause I just like the way it's set. Well, this, this one actually goes from small to large and I don't want a, a ginormous scale pattern on it. So we're going to kind of go in the middle. So we'll take the bait. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to take it out. The helping hands always want to lay over. So I'm going to grab my tape roll and I'm going to prop it up. You can really see the color shift purple now. And on the stencil, it's very small at the top. It gets a little bit bigger, bigger, bigger until it gets a little bit larger. I like the I like the scale pattern of about the middle for this size bait. I don't want it to be totally dominant on it. And we'll just come down a little bit, see how it looks. 
I like that. You can see it. It's not, not super dark. You can still see the pattern. We're gonna have to let it dry good. I like that. And then what we'll do while we got this side up, I'm gonna take the texture stencil and I'm gonna lay it over just a little bit. And I'm gonna hit some down toward the belly. And that gives it a really unique look. We'll let that dry. I'll, let, I'll pick it up and let you see it. I close up. It gives it a real cool texture. You can bear, you know, you can see the scale pattern. You really, it's just a, I don't want it to be, like I said, super dominant. So I'm not going to blast it on there because I want the color shift to be the, to be the, um, what's the eye appealing about the bait. So we'll lay this on and we'll hit it. You can get these stencils at Whitmore Farm. Very nice stencils. I mean, easy to work with. Very cool designs. We'll take our texture stencil and come down the bottom now. That gives it that beat up shad look what they all are i mean pretty much they especially if you have them in a bait bucket they just get they get beat up pretty bad okay i'm gonna let that dry and that's just the gerald mendez texture stencil the only thing i don't care a whole lot about them is they're like cardboard some kind of so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some SMS crystals and they're kind of just kind of clear, just kind of dressy, kind of like a candy, very transparent. Um, and I'm gonna spray, I've got two colors that I'm using, sapphire and emerald. And I'm gonna put the green on the bottom of the bait where it's kind of really transparent. And I'm gonna put the sapphire on top with the with the purple, it kind of gives it a, a really unique look. I'm gonna switch my guns and we're gonna go ahead and do the emerald first. We're gonna shake it up, get it ready to go. But they're really unique paint. I like them a lot. They're, like I said, they are solvent based, so I'm gonna turn the fan back on. You've gotta, you just gotta be careful when you're spraying them. So we're gonna put a little bit in the gun. I'll probably put too much in there. Probably have to put some back. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the lower half of the bait. And you can barely see it. It's kind of, I mean, I don't want to call it an interference, but it's close. It is very close to that. And I like just to coat it on there. And it'll give it a, when you turn it at a different angle, it'll, it'll give it an emerald an emerald green, just like sheen. So then we'll take the sapphire, shake it up, and we'll put a little bit over the top. And what that'll do, you know, where I did the scales in white, it'll kind of soften them a little bit. And that's, I don't want them to be white, white, because they're really kind of a, a silvery color. 
and it just I like that look a little bit better I've played with this pattern a little bit and it, and it seems to really be very close so what we'll do is we'll we'll hit the top especially where I hit the scale pattern I will run it over the tippy top and you can really see this color shifts is jumping I just put it on there pretty liberal and that's it that is it we will get the eyes in it and I'm not you know I've, I've got a let me clean this out real quick oh so we'll put the eyes in it and I'm gonna take my gloves off for that let it dry just a second um and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put my top coat on this today because i got a kind of an exciting video coming up something new that i have not tried i've uh, got a mini iwata rgl spray gun with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle needle nozzle set in it and i've also ordered some tamco 2k clear that I'm going to be doing the rat that I did in the last video. I'm going to be doing this. I'm very excited about that just to try it. You know, I use a lot of um, epoxy from Lure Coat. I use the UV Illumi UV resin. I've, I've kind of gotten pretty well versed in these different top coats, but I've never, I've always been kind of scared of the 2K clear because of my setup. But now that I've got this booth and I'm outside, I can um I can do it. So I ordered it. I'll be getting it next week. So that'll be an upcoming video. I'll do a video on the mini spray gun. Um, it's very cool and very affordable at that. That's that's the kicker of the whole thing. When I when I get it, I'll do a video on review on it, and then we'll do the Tamco ninety five hundred. So on this bait, it comes with two tails it comes with a flat one and kind of a long skinny one i kind of like the flat one and it comes with a bill and we'll go ahead and put the eyes in it we'll this thing is probably dried by now we'll go ahead and lay it flat set this over to the side it comes with the eyes I just got to get it. My hands aren't the greatest. I'm, they're doing a lot better. But I still got to be careful with what I chemically put on these baits so I don't get my hands all messed up. So we'll get that scooped up. And get it in here. Kind of a neat looking eye. For a not, I'm, I'm telling you guys, for a knockoff, this bait is heavy duty. It's it's not junk. I've I've used some of the smaller ones and I didn't really care for them, but this one actually has some weight to it, and is very very nice. So let's see how this tail goes. I always have fun putting these in. I may not be able to get it on camera today, but we're gonna try. Everybody uses tricks for this, but I've seen them put a little bit of WD-40 on them. I'm not even gonna fight that on video. This video is gone very long, but I'm still gonna put a coat of UVLS over this. It's a very cool blueback herring color. I hope this helps somebody that has blueback herring in their lakes and maybe for their customers. So hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification for upcoming videos. Don't forget I'll have some new ones coming out next week also on the new mini spray gun and the Tamco 9500. So like I always say, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.